everybody. Welcome to Foodie Friday. Today we're making one of my favorite things to make. I think I've said that every time we've made a recipe, but this really is one of my favorite things to make. We're making candy and we're going to make it today out of sweet and salty ingredients. So it's going to be a sweet and salty candy bark. Um, so let me show you our ingredients. First, we're going to use saltine crackers. I've already opened this box just to show you what they look like. These are the little square crackers that you would eat like with tomato soup is what I think of. So saltine crackers. That's one ingredient. We're gonna use two sticks of butter. We are going to use some brown sugar. So you'll need a cup of that and chocolate chips. I have um, milk chocolate chips. Let me show you my bag here. I bought milk chocolate chips at the store. If you have semi-sweet chips, that's typically what you bake with is a semi-sweet chocolate chip. Semi-sweet chips are fine too. So I just happen to have milk chocolate. This is a good way to use them. Um, so that's what I'm using. You'll need a cup and a half of those. And then you're gonna need something that you like to eat um, to top your candy. We're gonna crush up some toppings and put it on top. So for my toppings today, I have my all-time favorite candy, one of them, peanut butter M&Ms. And because they're so good with chocolate, I have some um, salted pistachios here. So you could use um, regular M&Ms, you could use um, like white chocolate, you could use um, pretzel pieces, you could like even break up potato chips, anything that's Sweet and chocolatey or salty would be perfect on top of this. Peanut butter chips, caramel chips, um, really whatever you want. I typically do um, M&Ms, pistachios, and sometimes peanuts on this too because I like chocolate and peanut together. All right, so let me show you how to get started here. First, you're going to need a baking sheet. This one is um, 15 inches by 10 inches, so it's just a large baking sheet. You also could make this on two smaller baking sheets. And this is a really easy recipe to double and then you can make more of it, especially if you're giving it away for the holidays. If you're gonna make this for other people, you want a pan for yourself and a pan for other people because it's that good. You do not wanna have give all this away. All right, so whatever pan you're using, you wanna cover it in something um, to protect the pan and make it easier to get your candy out. I picked foil. You also could use parchment paper. I haven't tried it with parchment, but I know you could use parchment um, just to protect your pan. Or you could also use a silicone baking mat if you have those at home. I just like to use foil because to me that's the easiest to kind of peel this off of. So then you're just gonna take your crackers here. Let me open up my, my sleeve. Open. There we go. You're gonna take your cracker sleeve, and this is really complex, not really. You're just gonna lay your, oops, lay your saltines out in rows on the pan. I like for them all to face up, I'm silly. And right here where there's a little edge, I might even just break a cracker and make it fit in there because I want the whole pan to be covered. But let me just kind of lay these down first. And while I'm doing this, let me talk about some other things that are going on with this candy um, that you'll need to know. Um, this is a recipe where you need an adult to help you because we're going to use the stove and the oven. Um, and we're gonna use a candy thermometer to make sure that we're not burning our candy today. And so all of these things are um, things that an adult is gonna um, need to help you with. My oven is already preheated to 300 degrees. So if you're making this, go ahead and preheat your oven to 300 degrees. It's good to have that preheated. It can kind of sit and wait for you um, to be done. And this is gonna take, oh, it says about 35 to 40 saltines. It'll, it'll be more than one sleeve for sure. And if they're broken, you know, sometimes you open up a sleeve of saltines and they're all broken. It doesn't matter because at the end, we're gonna break this into pieces anyway. So I'm just, Lining my pan with the saltines. I made this for um, people for um, Christmas this year, and Mr. Kyle's coworker wasn't eating gluten, right? And he could eat this. Mm -hmm. So he, um, this was the one he could eat. Yes. No, it was the the peanut butter and oh, marshmallow right. thing. That's right. Yeah. So this is not gluten free. Sorry, folks. I was trying for you, but I guess if you had um, gluten free crackers and if you modified what your sugar was that you were using. Um, we don't really cook a lot of gluten-free over here, so I couldn't remember which one he was able to eat. But All right, so I'm just kind of breaking little pieces and sticking them in here where they fit. Again, this does not have to be perfect. We're gonna cover this up. Um, so I'm just doing the best I can here. I just want them to look, or just want them to, they don't have to look any certain way, I just want them to cover the pan. But this is kind of small, this stick one. Usually when I open a box of saltines, there are plenty of like broken pieces. I don't have to actually break them myself. I guess I bought the, I bought the like real brand and not the store-bought brand. Maybe that was the difference there. Okay. Like I said, not perfect. 
and that's okay. They don't have to, these, this part doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to get covered by lots of other yummy ingredients, but you definitely want some of that cracker part on the bottom of each bite. So that's why I'm filling in all these little gaps here as much as I can. One little tiny piece in the corner and one bite for me. Okay, I'm gonna move my extra crackers out of the way. All right, now we're just gonna set this to the side. Whoops, look, I had a cracker hiding there this whole time. That was funny. Let's see if we can find one somewhere. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna slide this over to the side and we're gonna come over here to our pot. Let me show you what's going on over here. So I've got my induction burner again, just um, to make it easier for me to film this and show you. Normally I would do this on my stove back there, but I just wanted you to be able to see it more easily and it's kind of dark back there. Um, so I've got just a regular saucepan here and this is a candy thermometer. Let me take this off and show you. Um, it just has a little clip on the back. So it clips to the side of a pot and this slides so you can put it in any size pot. Um, really good for like if you're um, making candy or boiling, making like heating up oil if you're gonna fry some chicken or something and you need to get it to a specific temperature and keep it at that temperature. That's why you would use a thermometer like this. Um, so clearly we use it for really healthy things because we're using it for candy and fried chicken. Um, so I'm just clipping it. Let me show you, I'm just clipping it to the back of my pot here. And I'm gonna turn it this way so that you can see it also. All right, and into this pot, I'm going to put two sticks of butter. This is one cup of butter. Each um, stick of butter has eight tablespoons, which is half a cup. So mathematicians out there, that means that there are how many tablespoons in a whole cup? If you said 16, you were right. Eight and half a cup, 16 tablespoons in a whole cup. I think those conversions are helpful to know. Okay, so I've got two sticks of butter in there. I'm gonna go ahead and start heating this. Let me see. I'm gonna heat it. Hold on. I wanna get it to a temperature of, it's not happening. Okay, I wanna get this to a temperature of um, like 270 to 290 degrees. So I'm heating, I set my heat right here for 280. We're gonna see what that does and then I'll raise it if I need to. But what that means is I'm watching for this thermometer. I'm making sure that my thermometer is as close to the bottom of the pan as I can get it so that it'll register the temperature of the liquid that's gonna be in there. And I want this to get to between 270 and 290 degrees. And the reason we're being so specific um, is because with candy, you want it to harden and have a certain snap to it, and it won't do that if it gets um, too hot. It won't do that if it doesn't get hot enough. All right, so I just added one cup of packed um, brown sugar. Remember, packed means that I really packed it down in there with my hands um, into the measuring cup. Let me just brush my hands off of this thing. Okay, I like to have that brown sugar in my hand. Okay, so now I'm just melting this. And you can see down in here, my butter is starting to sort of boil a little bit. It's getting hot. I mean, it's not really boiling. It's just kind of bubbling a little. It's getting hot, it's melting. This um, induction burner melts a lot faster than your burner at home is gonna melt. That's another reason I'm using it. So this is gonna take some time at home. It will not melt as fast as what I'm doing here. Our burners at home, we can't set them like this for a specific temperature, which is another reason why it's helpful to have a candy thermometer so you can really see what's going on in this pot. If you don't have a candy thermometer, you can still make this. Um, it's, you're not gonna ruin anything. You'll just boil it for about um, three minutes or so, and then it'll be ready for the next step. Like once it's melted, you know, you'll let it kind of boil for three minutes or so, we'll get it high enough. So, I'm just trying to read our thermometer. My butter still isn't all the way melted. I'm just stirring to help it along. Just stirring it. If you were gonna make, we're, we're kind of making a, almost a caramel here. When we heat sugar like this and boil it, um, it, it makes caramel. And so typically if you were gonna make a caramel sauce, you would use a white sugar, just some interesting caramel facts for you. We're using brown today, um, but that's another reason to have a candy thermometer. If you were gonna make your own caramel at home, um, you would wanna make sure you heated it to the right temperature. Some caramel, you would want it to be soft and chewy. And other caramels, you know, caramel candies are kind of hard. And then you could even make a caramel sauce, which you would want it to be kind of loose and not able to form into a candy. So like when I make an apple pie, I love to make apple pie. It's Mr. Kyle's favorite. If I make an apple pie, I like to make a salted caramel sauce to go along with it. Also, do you say caramel or caramel? Because I realized in this one sentence, I've said both. Caramel and caramel. 
Uh, but I like to make a salted caramel sauce to go along with my apple pie. And I use this candy thermometer. So I make sure that I heat my sugar to the right temperature so that it caramelizes and forms a sauce. All right, can, are you seeing in there? That um, butter and brown sugar are melting together. What's my temperature? So, it's not hot yet. It's getting there. Turn this so I can view it. All right, I'm just looking. I've got to get it to where I can read the mercury, or it's not mercury, but the red line in our thermometer. It's at about 120. We're looking for up here, it's 280 to 300. We want it to get in between there because we're aiming for about 290 at the highest. So I'm just stirring and watching. Stirring this and watching. If you um, really like browned butter and things, you would Put your butter in a pot like this and let it get like real nice and brown you could put brown butter in pasta and things like that so i kind of feel like i'm browning the butter we're not actually going to brown it and we've got sugar in here too so it won't do that but that's what it feels like it smells really good in here i can smell that butter melting and then i smell the sugar with it i'm just wafting it toward my nose it smells like christmas because like i said i make this for christmas and it's definitely boiling look at those bubbles right there we are getting to um it's funny, that, I mean, we're not at like a boiling temperature. I'm looking at Fahrenheit right here on my, um, on my thermometer. If you don't know what temperature liquids boil at, you can look that up. I'm not gonna tell you, I'm gonna make you go find it. Do you know? Um, we're quizzing two, Mr. Kyle. 200 degrees. You're close. 210 degrees. Even closer. 220 degrees. <laughs> Go Google it. Find out what temperature liquids boil at. This is getting up there. The temperature is climbing. I can feel it. I can feel the heat coming off of this. We are at, ooh, we're at 200, just about. Only 90 more degrees to go, guys. I'm not kidding you when I say this smells amazing. It smells like a salted caramel, even though there's not salt in here. Um, it's unsalted butter. You could use salted butter, just whatever you have. I just always buy unsalted. It doesn't matter um, for these recipes that I've been posting if you use salted or unsalted. It's just whatever you buy. This is almost getting to, look at this consistency. It's like kind of, it's like thick and fluffy almost. It's, you know, it falls off the spatula like that, but it definitely is changing into a different consistency. I love candy because it involves some chemistry because we're actually, um, well, gosh, you can tell me too. Are we seeing a um, a physical change? Are we seeing a chemical change here? What's happening um, in our pot? We've, it's still butter and caramel, right? Have we created something new? Or is it still just butter and caramel? Would this be a physical or a chemical change? You can ponder that and decide what you think. Because it's still, we haven't added anything else. It's still butter and caramel. That's what this is on this spatula. It's just, um, it's physical state looks different, right? It's looking fluffy. It's boiling. What are we at? Oh, 240. We're getting there. We can keep talking about physical and chemical changes <laughs> until it gets there. I'm stirring a lot. Just I'm just keeping an eye on it because um, I'm using this induction cooktop, which I don't normally use. And so I want to make sure I don't burn it. But you'll want to stir yours too. Um, really just to make sure that you're keeping an eye on this and that it's not burning. This is not something that you wanna put on the stove and walk away, like boiling water for pasta. You definitely wanna keep your eye on this. Mr. Kyle is watching our temperature. What are we at now? 250. 250, look at that. It went up 10 degrees so fast. Oh, it is getting, it's hot mm -hmm. on this burner. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's definitely hot. The burner's loud too. It, stopped, it was making a really loud noise. I felt like I was yelling. <laughs> it just stopped making that noise, luckily. Still going, still going. If you don't have a candy thermometer, time how long this is taking, because this is real time. This is, um, yours is gonna take a little bit longer than this so because you're not gonna use an induction cooktop. So see how long mine is taking and then add a couple minutes to that. And that's about how long yours is gonna take on a regular stove. Um, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done so you can make sure that you are getting this right consistency. I have definitely made this plenty of times without a candy thermometer. And it's one of those things that like it always tastes good. But this particular recipe that I found that I've been using lately 
says to use the candy thermometer. So I've been doing that since I have one. Look, it's almost like a like a jelly now. You see that? Mm -hmm. it's like, Whoa. <laughs> the consistency is changing again. We are at 270. Okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna let it get up to 280 because that's right in between our, oops, it's beeping at me. That's right in between our target where we wanna be. So I'm gonna let it go just a little bit higher. And then you're gonna see what we're gonna do with this amazing concoction. And guys, this is really hot. We are above a boiling temperature. This will burn you if it gets on you. So at this point, you need to have an adult um, helping you with this process. Um, this is really, really hot. This could be dangerous. And we're gonna pour this in a minute. So that's something that a, an adult needs to help you with. Okay, now we're getting kind of some bubbles on the top. That's interesting. Butter. I think it's the butter. Mm -hmm. Hmm. More science is happening. Okay, we are at about 280 degrees. So I'm gonna turn this off. Okay, I'm gonna carefully remove my candy thermometer. Now, it, the bottom is really, really hot. I don't wanna touch the bottom. Just tapping it off a little bit. I'm just gonna set it right here because I've got some wrappers right here. Do not touch that. The, the top you can touch, the top is safe. But don't touch the bottom because it's been in that liquid. All right, this is what we ha are left with. Look at this. This is like a bubbly, caramel really it's butter and um, sugar which is what makes caramel so look we're gonna take these crackers that we laid out so carefully in our pan I'm gonna pour this toward you so you can see and we're just gonna pour this goodness over those crackers one last drop with something hot like this um, pour it away from yourself I started to pour it toward myself and then I changed if you are skilled enough to pour it away from yourself do that um, it's safer I'm just getting it off the bottom of the pan um, Right. out of the way. Okay, now I'm gonna take my spatula and just spread this out over these crackers. And you wanna do this kind of quickly because the longer you let it sit, it's gonna start cooling off. And what happens when candy like this cools off, it hardens. We don't want that to happen until we've gotten it all spread over our crackers here. Does it look weird that I'm spreading left-handed? Actually, so I'm a lefty. I've always been a lefty. And I was watching a cooking video yesterday, and the uh, and I and I cut left-handed with you know knives and scissors and no scissors I do right-handed, but knives I do left-handed. And I was watching a cooking video yesterday, and I couldn't figure out why the chef looked so strange on the video. And I realized it's because they were cutting left-handed, and I was like, well, that shouldn't look weird to me. I am left-handed, but it did. So here, I'll switch to my right hand. <laughs> These little parts where the crackers are poking up are giving me a little bit of trouble. If you've done that where you have little crackers layered on top of crackers, you can, if you want to take those out, you can, but just kind of smooth it over the, the, the best you can. All right, just gonna get it all. This pan is gonna heat up too because we've just put something that's almost 300 degrees on top of this foil. Look, more science is coming your way right now. Foil, is foil an insulator or a conductor, Mr. Kyle? A conductor. <laughs> he did not know he was going to get a science quiz for you. <laughs> Foil is a conductor, which means it's going to conduct heat. Um, it's going to conduct electricity, but it's going to conduct heat is what we're talking about right now, um, which means that when we pour something that's 350 degrees onto this foil, it's going to heat up. Um, and the, my, my pan is metal too, and that metal is a conductor. So um, make sure that you're careful as you're spreading this. If you get um, too close to the liquid, but also you know, too close to that hot foil, you run the risk of burning yourself. Right now, let me test. It's hot on the bottom for sure. Feels on the bottom like it's kind of been in a warm oven. Um, it didn't burn me because I just kind of touched it real lightly with my hand, but it is hot. Okay. I'm like determined that these little end pieces will not be left out. No cracker left behind. Okay, there we go. Got the little corner, my little sad corner over here. All right. That'll be my little corner that I'll taste. Actually, this whole pan is mine. <laughs> all right, so now this is all spread out. It's starting to harden and that's fine. Now this is a, kind of a strange step because I was telling you that cooling it hardens it. We're gonna put this in the oven for five minutes. That's, the, that's as long as it takes, five minutes. And this is gonna come out and it's gonna be hard and we're looking for it to have a snap. Snap means that we're gonna be able to break it into pieces. So very carefully, in fact, because I told you, I know that bottom is hot. I'm actually gonna grab an oven mitt. Put it on the right way. And I'm gonna use my oven mitt to <laughs> Mr. Kyle's like, other way. My thumb is going the <laughs> way. I'm gonna put this in the oven for five 
five minutes. Let me set my timer here. Do, 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 do. Okay, I was debating if I wanted to do that timer or if I wanted to do my Alexa timer, mm -hmm. but I did that one. Okay, that's going for five minutes. Now let's talk about our chocolate on the top. Like I said, we're gonna put chocolate chips on the top of this. And so I've measured out pretty close to a cup and a half of chocolate chips. And you want this to be in a microwave safe container. This is glass, um, this can go in the microwave. So these are gonna go in the microwave for 30 seconds, which is not a lot. That's actually not enough to melt it, but we don't wanna burn our chocolate. So when we're melting chocolate like this, we wanna melt it in short increments in the microwave. In fact, normally I would put it at half power, also 30 seconds for half power. I didn't today, hopefully it's fine. But um, 30 second increments, 30 seconds at a time for half power if you can, and then you'll stir it with a spatula in between. I've got my spatula ready to stir. That'll make sure that you don't over melt your chocolate and cause it to burn. We definitely don't want burned chocolate on this. So I'm just looking at my chocolate, it's almost done. And it's gonna look like not a lot has happened. Well, actually, we can see a little bit here. Look, you can see a little bit of melting around the bottom. See that? And the handle starts to get a little bit warm, so be careful with this. It's definitely not dangerous to melt these in the microwave, but it does, you know, we're talking about heat, so it can get a little warm. Yeah, we know they're melting because they're sticking to my spatula just a little bit. Okay, and this goes back in for another 30 seconds. All right, I'm just gonna keep melting those for 30 seconds at a time. And while I do that, we're gonna talk about our toppings. Let me get a little, Like I said, I have a couple of things that I like to put on top of here. And one of them is pistachios. So if you watched my journeys video this week where we made tortillas, we actually talked about this little thing right here. This is a mulcajete or um, a mortar and pestle. And this is something we talked about how the ancient civilizations in Central and South America would have used something like this to grind their corn um, into a corn flour to make things like tortillas and tamales. Um, they also would have used it. They could grind, they could grind up like dried herbs and things like that. Um, oh look, this is getting nice and melty. I'm gonna let this keep going. Um, so we used the mulcajete today. So I still had it sitting out and um, I decided to use it to smash up my toppings for this candy. Let me stick this back in. Look, that is looking nice and gooey. I mean, I could just dive right in there with a spoon. I won't, but I could. I am gonna put this on my half power. High level five, start. Okay. I don't want to burn my chocolate. That's really important. All right, so what I'm doing here, I'm just taking some pistachios. I'm gonna pour some into my mocha hete. I'm just gonna smash them up a little bit. It's a good way to relieve some anger if you're mad at somebody. If you don't have a mocha hete, that is perfectly fine. You can do other things too to chop up your toppings. Um, you could cut them on a cutting board with a knife. That's typically what I do. Just feeling fancy today. You also could put them in a baggie, like a Ziploc baggie, and put them somewhere safe and just kind of smash them with a hammer or a meat a meat mallet if you have a meat mallet. That's another way to crush up toppings. Oh, crushed up Oreos. That would be good on this too. If you crush up some Oreos. I always like to crush those in a baggie using like a rolling pin or a, a meat mallet, meat tenderizer. Okay, so these are getting nice and chopped up. Can you see in there? Don't this look good? This actually was a lot faster than using my knife. This, this thing just kind of lives up on a high shelf. It was a wedding present and it is super, super heavy. Like really heavy. It's made of marble um, or some heavy stone. I think it's marble. But it's really heavy. So Didn't we get two? We did. The other one was glass and it broke. That's right. This should not be made out of glass. That was a bad call. Who made that? Okay. I'm just going to dump my pistachios in a bowl. I just want to show you. Let me clean that out here. I'm going to put pistachios on part of it. If that's not enough, I'll crush some more. And then I'm gonna put some candy of the gods. <laughs> Peanut butter M&Ms. I'm gonna put some in here and I'm gonna put the rest of the bag over by Mr. Kyle because I know he's going to want to eat those. Actually, he wanted the pistachios earlier, so excuse any chewing noises that you hear in the background. Oh, look at that, they're popping out of here. I got it. Good thing I have a buddy here to eat the M&Ms that come shooting out of the mortar and pestle, am I right? Guys, this is really fun. I, I think I like crushing the M&Ms more than the pistachios. <laughs> Look at this. That is just a beautiful rainbow of peanut butter, M&M goodness. 
You can crush them as big or as small as you want. They're gonna sprinkle on the top. Look, peanut butter doesn't crush super easily, so these are gonna be a little sticky, and that's okay. I think the peanut butter is gonna add a great flavor, so I'll put up with a little stickiness. Oh, perfect timing, because my five minute timer is going off behind me. Okay, I've got M&Ms crushed up. I've got pistachios crushed up. Let me slide these to the side and grab. Turn this off. Okay. Now this is really, really hot. Obviously it's coming out of the oven and it smells good. Okay, this is my pan right here. So don't touch this pan. It's really hot. I only have one oven mitt, so I'm trying not to touch it with the other hand. So this has like really kind of dried up a little bit and it's gonna harden as it cools even more. So um, really, I can't tell you what that baking step does, except it's important, so don't skip it. And it was just five minutes in the oven. So that's ready. Now, let me check in my melted chocolate. This should be ready too. Ooh, that handle is a little hot. Let me stir this up. Oh yeah. Look at that. Mm. Gooey chocolate. Guess where this is gonna go? This, you're right, this goes right on the top of that caramel that we made. And I don't want to waste a single drop. If you're more of a dark chocolate person, oh my word, use dark chocolate for this. That would be so wonderful. Uh, you could probably even like divide the pan, you know, mentally and put like half milk chocolate, half dark chocolate. You could use white chocolate. You could combine the two. Be creative with this. I love recipes where you can adapt them and make them your own and not necessarily follow it word for word. There are plenty of recipes where you have to follow word for word, like if you're baking a cake. You can't really play with those measurements too much unless you're like a star baker because science, right? Baking is a science. You have to be so precise. But with something like this, you have a little freedom to play around and put the flavors that you want. And that experimenting in the kitchen is what makes you become a good cook. You've gotta be able to experiment. Okay, I'm putting my oven mitt on because I wanna hold this pan steady while I spread this chocolate over it. If for some reason you um, don't have enough chocolate to cover the pan, like I'm looking at it and it like worries me that I'm gonna run out of chocolate. I've never run out of chocolate making this, but oh my goodness, what if I run out of chocolate? That's okay, melt some more, it's fine. This chocolate isn't gonna cool like super, super fast. Remember, you're putting it on something hot, so it's gonna stay melty long enough for you to spread it around, long enough for you to add more if you need to. Just get a little artsy with it. Yeah, thank you for your artsy camera angles there. We should have some like Food Network music playing in the background. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do, 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 Chocolate do, 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 spreading do, do, do. music. You know, I like to get every little piece covered. You do not have to be as nitpicky with it as I'm being. Just spread the chocolate, it's just chocolate. It's gonna taste good no matter what it looks like. And we're gonna cover this up with toppings. So do not feel like this is a perfectionist candy. Like be messy with it. Don't, I mean, don't get your fingers in there cause it's hot, but you know, don't feel like it has to be spread in like perfect rows. We're not frosting a cake here. If you watch British baking show, Paul Hollywood is not gonna come here and judge our candy. Although that's too bad for him because I think he would find our candy delightful. And it does not have a soggy bottom, so they would like that. <laughs> it is nice and crispy on the bottom and salty. Just spreading this chocolate to the edge. As much as I can get to the edge. Some bites are going to be chocolatier than others because the chocolate's kind of thick in some places. But every bite is going to be delicious, so it doesn't really matter. All right. If you wanted to, if you wanted to leave it just chocolate and you wanted it to look pretty, you could kind of do a swirl design on it like I'm doing. You could like do stripes, do it in nice, neat rows of stripes with your spatula. You could use an offset spatula or just leave it messy and cover it up, which is what I normally do. I know someone who's gonna want this chocolate spatula, Mr. Kyle. Oh, I was gonna set it next to him, but look, there goes his hand. He's taking it. That's his job, licking the chocolate spatulas around here. Okay, now it's time for my toppings. I've got pistachios and I've got my M&Ms. So I would normally just do like one topping for the whole pan, but because I wanted to show you a couple different toppings, I'm gonna do a little half and half situation here. So pistachios on one half. Pistachios might seem like a weird topping. I tried it this Christmas because I was kind of running low on peanuts. And it was like I discovered just a whole new world of just amazing flavor. The pistachio and the chocolate and the salt from the crackers was just 
the perfect combination. I think the green is so pretty because pistachios are green. Look at that, it's so pretty. You could even, oh, someone licked my spatula. Hmm. You could even <laughs> take a spatula, a clean one that your family member has not stolen and licked. Um, you could take a spatula and just kind of push those in if you wanted, but they are gonna stay. They're, you know, they're embedded in that chocolate. If they fall off, just, you know, it's fine. Okay, now we're going in with, obviously, the best ingredient in this whole thing, peanut butter M&Ms. You know what I think I'm gonna do with this pan? I have to bring dessert for Mother's Day to bring something to my mom. You know, we are struggling with, you know, how do we celebrate Mother? You're probably all struggling. How do we celebrate Mother's Day this year? We can't really be together so much with people that we don't live with, but we're gonna distantly see my mom. And I wonder if she would like, I don't wonder, I know, <laughs> because she's, I'm her daughter. And my love for chocolate peanut butter came from her. <laughs> I know that she would love some of this pan of dessert. So I probably could be generous and share. I'm just gonna press these in. Guys, that is it. Our candy is done, sort of. It's not quite ready to eat yet. Um, this has to cool. It has to like fully set up, which means the whole pan is gonna cool. The caramel's gonna harden. The chocolate is gonna harden. And it's gonna get to where we can just literally break it into pieces. So we're gonna let that happen. Now, my directions, and I've never done this before, my directions say if you wanted to cut it into nice neat squares, you could at this point before you, <laughs> I've got chocolate all over my hand. At this point, you could actually get a sharp knife out with an adult's help and cut nice neat squares of this. That is for boring people, guys. We are not cutting nice neat squares. We're gonna cool this when it's cool, we're gonna break it into big, small, jagged looking chunks of candy because it looks more fun that way and it's fun to break it. Um, to cool this, I like to just set it in the refrigerator. You can even pop it in the freezer. The colder it is, the less time it's gonna take to cool. So pop this, and that's pretty cool to touch. Pop this in the fridge. If yours isn't cool to touch, use your oven mitt. Pop this in the fridge or freezer until your chocolate is all the way set. Like I can tell mine's not set because it's coming off on my finger. Ooh, and it's hot. Um, so when it's all the way set, I'm gonna come back here and we're gonna break this into a bunch of little pieces. All right, I'll see you then. It's been about an hour and our candy is done. It's been cooling in the fridge this whole time and the chocolate has gotten um, nice and hard. So we are ready to break our candy into pieces. So I'm just gonna lift this whole thing out of the pan. Push that out of our way. And I'm just loosening the foil. Kyle. I'm just loosening the foil from the edges while Mr. Kyle gets an artistic camera angle here. I hope he's not making you all dizzy with the camera. All right, and now the fun part, this is all loosened. See, it really doesn't stick to the foil, this is that butter. So um, I, don't, I don't know if parchment comes off this easily. I hope it does, but I've always just used foil. So just loosening that. And now we're gonna break. So you just break pieces, whatever size. This is like so fun. Look at that, the whole thing just broke off. I'm just gonna break it into small pieces. I don't mean to be making squares. It's just kind of how they're coming out. Just break. They can be squares, triangles, whatever shape. I wonder if I can break this like evenly where the pistachio, eh, I'll have some. Can you break it into a rhombus? Break it into a rhombus? Let's, I'll see if I find a rhombus. Let's see. Some of you are studying quadrilaterals. So you could break this into, oh man, look at that perfect rectangle I just made. Uh, Not surprising, it's because it's two crackers. I'm gonna break it. <laughs> Here's a rhombus for you, right? To be honest, I don't, I forgot what a rhombus was. These so. are break, these, okay. These are breaking <laughs> into like perfect squares and they don't normally. Normally it's like very jagged pieces. So you're getting my very geometric candy. There we go. That's what I like to see. You're getting my very geometric candy today. Triangles on one half, squares on the other. That's my goal. They don't, seriously, they normally do not break into easy squares like this. It's a miracle. This little piece. Broke off. Mm, oh my gosh, guys. So good. So if I were gonna make this for the holidays, I would pile all this up in a cute little tin and deliver it. But since it's just for me, I don't have to put in anything cute. I can just pick out the piece I wanna eat. So I'm gonna go with the peanut butter first. Peanut butter M&Ms, we've got chocolate, we've got that caramel that we made, the salty coming in from the cracker. Can we get a layer? Perfect. Layer mm -hmm. shot. I wanna see the layers? They look the same as they do where I broke it. Spoiler alert. Pass it over to Mr. Kyle so you can taste the peanut butter. I usually do regular m and so this is a fun treat for us. And now I'll break up a little piece of this pistachio. 
so good. I love, like, I love the peanut butter M&Ms, but honestly, the nuts are so good on it. And you can use whatever's in the pantry. If you have peanuts, use that. Almonds, walnuts. Doesn't have to be nuts if you don't eat nuts. So that's it. That is my easy, sweet and salty candy. And I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you make this and I hope you love it. Bye.